one thing I've been noticing with many of my clients is a heavy emphasis on data-driven design. I think it's going to be one of the most important design trends of the 2020s and beyond. This video will give you a better understanding of why data will be so important to designing the products we make, the ethical controversies around data collection, and why some types of data are much more valuable than others. So first of all, data are just facts and statistics collected for reference or analysis. Everyone uses data to make decisions all the time. That's nothing new. But within the context of this video, I'm talking about millions or even billions of data points collected and used to inform product decisions. This somewhat recent phenomenon is allowing us to do things that were impossible even as recently as a few years ago. Pretty much all major innovations in design are a direct result of emerging technology, and this trend towards big data and the designs that will result from it are no exception. When designing the HoloLens 2, Microsoft had to figure out how to make a headset that would fit on everyone's head comfortably. The HoloLens 2 weighs about 580 grams, and that's basically the equivalent of strapping a loaf of bread to the front of your forehead and wearing it for several hours. I tested it so you don't have to, it's very uncomfortable. But this task gets even more difficult when you factor in the radically different shapes and sizes of people's heads. It's basically like trying to make a one-size-fits-all shoe. Individuals have radically different facial features as well, so if you're designing a headset that's supposed to fit over your eyes, it's not going to be easy if one person's brow ridge is 0 millimeters and another's is 15 millimeters. So Microsoft had to scan thousands upon thousands of people's heads in order to determine the ideal shape for their headset design. This gave them the necessary data to make proper decisions in making a one-size-fits-most design. Without that data, Microsoft would have ended up with a far less comfortable headset. For anyone who's worn a VR or AR headset that's clunky and uncomfortable, you know how much it takes you out of the experience. The HoloLens team also had to deal with heat, so when you have a computer strapped to your face, it's not only important to make sure that it's comfortable in terms of not hitting any pressure points, but it also needs to direct the heat away from your head. Testing this with physical prototypes would have taken forever. So instead, they created a digital twin, and a digital twin is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's just a digital clone of whatever you're trying to make in real life. So in the case of HoloLens, they probably gathered all of the relevant data about the product. Material compositions, component arrangement, material distribution, thickness and types, and various heat diffusion features. They put all of this in a computer simulation that was a replica of the physical device, and placed that digital twin through thousands of trials and tests until the AI was able to come up with a solution that successfully diffused the heat. That's how they came up with this component configuration, and it's probably how they came up with the channels along the top of the HoloLens, which helped to cool the device by guiding the heat upward and away from the person's face. The digital twin didn't give them a perfect finished product, it was just sort of a model for them, but it got them close enough to the final design so that they could move more quickly. The data that the HoloLens team used to create this design gave them a very distinct competitive advantage, and you're going to see more of this data-driven design as these tools become more accessible for everyone to use. New cloud computing and machine learning tools allow companies to sift through this data in a way that used to be difficult or impossible. HoloLens is one of the most comfortable headsets on the market right now. And I can't stress enough how hard it is to make a 580 gram computer strapped to your head be comfortable. And Microsoft did it with the help of data. Now data is going to be incredibly important to creating a competitive advantage in product design, but only if it's done in a smart way. So if we continue to use HoloLens as an example, their data on facial scans is hard to access. They can probably continue to improve it as they collect more data and therefore improve the actual final product. But eventually it's going to lead to diminishing returns. Turns. So if the designers and engineers manage to make the headset fit 100% of people and everyone can wear it with no issues for 18 hours, making the headset even more comfortable after that point is going to sort of become unnecessary. If the data you're collecting stops being useful after a certain point, it's not as valuable, of course. There's nothing wrong with this necessarily, you just need to think about this as you formulate a design strategy as it relates to data. You can contrast this with a client that I've worked with in the medical field called Insight Surgical. They're using computer vision to identify all of the tools in the operating room so that something like a gauze pad doesn't accidentally end up inside of the patient after an operation. And yes, this actually does happen. If that data becomes even 0.1% more accurate, 
it could save lives. So there's a huge benefit to collecting more data in this case. It also makes it harder and harder for other competitors to catch up. So if one solution is 90% effective at identifying these surgical complications, just because they have more data to rely on and another competitor comes up and it's only 80% as effective, it's pretty obvious which one you're going to choose. On top of that, getting access to medical data is extremely difficult because there are all sorts of regulations around how medical records and patient data are shared. This data can't be bought and it's very, very hard to obtain. So Insight Surgical doesn't keep any of the video footage and they use computer vision to blur out the name tags and faces of everyone in the operating room. So it's totally anonymous. I think it's important to mention this because it's a great example of collecting data in an ethical way that ultimately benefits the patient and the hospital staff. Another thing is that while the data that Microsoft has on head scans is not especially easy to access, the resulting product that came out of that data is not hard to copy. So any competing company could just sort of get a HoloLens and copy the way the weight is distributed, copy the materials and padding placement, and copy the way that the heat is diffused. A competitor could get the benefits of all of the research that the Microsoft team did without having to do any of the work. So while the data does give them an initial competitive advantage, it can quickly be copied. It's still worth it for Microsoft and other companies in the long run because they're always going to be one step ahead of the competition, but it's not quite as valuable as the data that Insight Surgical has for their computer vision. Anyway, if you made it this far into the video, you should totally subscribe. It's free, it helps me out, and you can always change your mind later. On to the rest of the video. Zinger is another company that runs thousands of simulations in order to optimize the strength to weight ratio of various components for their hypercar. This hypercar is built using several computer generated simulations that rely heavily on data. This allows the engineers and designers to come up with shapes that a human probably would never have thought of. Nike is another company that's investing heavily in data to determine the outsole structure and pattern for some of their highest performing shoes. Data will enable more customizability and personalization for each user. Nike made a customized outsole for each of their athletes' unique foot shapes and running event, and it helped their team win 45 medals during the 2016 Rio Olympics. It's getting to a point where data not only informs how to design something, but also what to design in the first place. So Shein is a great example of this. They're the biggest fashion brand that you've never heard of unless you're their target demographic of teenage girls, which pretty much none of my viewers are. The company is currently valued at about $15 billion. Their strategy is super data heavy, and as a result, they're aggressively taking market share from the big fast fashion players like Zara, H&M, and Forever 21. They do this by analyzing data from social media and other trending search terms. So if a video goes viral of a girl wearing a stylish outfit or top, Shein will immediately contact one of their factories to make a copy of the garment. The factory will do a limited run of 100 units and see how the sales go. Based on how fast the first few units sell, they decide whether or not to create more of them. Other companies do this too, Zara is a big one. But to be fair, there are a lot of issues with Shein's business model and pretty much any fast fashion brand. They often copy other designers' work without compensating them, they have questionable quality and safety standards in their factories, and there's a massive amount of environmental waste that comes from these brands. The ethics of Shein as a company are definitely questionable, don't get me wrong, but they clearly have developed a system that's really, really heavily data-driven, and I think it's a great case study on how data can inform product design decisions. The way that Shein collects data is also very controversial, and it's hard to talk about data without talking about privacy issues. This is usually good for the business, but it's not always good for the end customer. A lot of companies are taking more data than they need to and even selling to third parties or using it to influence your decisions and purchasing habits in a negative way without your knowledge or permission. More recently, Apple created a new feature on their phones where you can decide whether it's okay for certain apps to collect, track, and sell your usage habits. This totally destroyed Facebook's revenue and data tracking capabilities because they rely very, very heavily on this information. Not only did Facebook lose a ton of money on this, but their stock price plummeted about 26% after it was reported that fewer people are using Facebook. Now, there are a lot of reasons why fewer people are using Facebook, but the issues they've had with data collection is definitely definitely no small part of that. The same data collection methods that turned them into one of the biggest companies in the world is finally catching up to them. The lesson here is that companies really need to be careful about how the data they collect affects their customers. 
So how do you know if you've taken your data collection too far as a company? Well, I think a good starting point would be to ask my users and myself two questions. Number one, is the data that I'm collecting benefiting the customer or is it really only benefiting my business's bottom line? If it's not explicitly benefiting the user's experience in some way, you probably shouldn't do it. It might work out in the short term, but you run the risk of having the same issue that Facebook has recently had. And number two, just tell your user what kind of data you're collecting and how you're using it in a transparent way and ask him if they're okay with it. And I don't mean in a dense privacy policy that nobody reads. I mean in real human simple terms. Data collection can be unethical, but it's just a tool and it's a powerful tool that's not going away. So rather than trying to demonize it, we should instead focus on how we can collect data that actually benefits the end customer. Anyway, thanks for checking out the video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to get notified about when I post my next video. And don't forget to smash that like button and all the other YouTube cliches that YouTubers say, but really all that stuff really does help me out. So I appreciate you. Have a great day.